ओ पोस्ट में ओ फेर में ओ एडम में एन एक्सक्लेमेशन ऑफ एडम स्कॉट द मेडिएवल एबट एज ही रिफ्लेक्टेड ऑन द पावर ऑफ क्राइस्ट लाइंस रिटन इन स्टूडेंट डेज इन रोम ऑन असेंशन डे O Christ alive and well O Christ of fire here standing in the sun O son of man of essence god of god to godhead high rise into clouds that hide the mid light wan from looking at thy shining gaze upon the ball that thou didst tread and shalt recall to order at the ordering whereon the all shall be what can alone be all thy toy o king that with the fingers power thou didst bid be and happily combine in cause and cause entwined at perfect hour in calcul of time's dawn born once to shine o lamb once slain now standing stand in might upon a cosmos dreamt upon a night In quiet prayer, in the hours of night and early vigil, I was taken in spirit to Mount Tabor. Here it is. This Bible actually came from the Holy Land. And it's full of pictures of things which have not changed. A very high mountain apart, we are told in the Gospel, and so it is. Up there, one feels power. It is the place where there would have been an encounter by rendezvous, as the angel told the holy women to tell the apostles that they were to go to Galilee, and so they went to the place where he had given them rendezvous, and there it was. It was not the place of ascension, probably the place of commissioning. The ascension took place, we you know from unbroken tradition, on Mount Olivet. The footprint is there to show it. But I would like you to come with me to that point in time. The Lord shared our time for 33 years. It was in my mind what was in his in his humanity as he left our time and geography. Was there a twinge in his humanity of affection for faces and places where there had also been joy in the human Was he thinking as he left our time and geography of all the departures from time and geography of the human race ahead? The other day I was talking to a friend who had been talking to a friend of his who has a sentence of death over him. You know what that means, the big C. And his friend had calmly said, I'm in the departure lounge. 
but we're all in the departure lounge. And I was trying to think both ways, the past and the long future. Which way am I going with regard to quality? Quality of decisions, of graces abused and used, of charity, as the first reading expresses it, covering a multitude of sins. For in the last resort, our Lord's will is not complex, and that is always its interpreter. How do I love in this present moment? And I asked for a word during Lecture Divina, and this came precisely in that context of jumping back in time. One day, in student days, I had been obliged to learn this passage actually off by heart. Around about St. David's Day, we have lots of competitions in school and college. And one competition was the recitation of a passage of scripture. It was this. And I'll read you the first and last verse, and you'll see why. Years ago, now this is going back to 1975. Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. I jump to the last verse. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. It also took me back to the age of thirteen, because it was the scripture on which preached the minister that was baptising me. Because we have just buried this week my Sunday school teacher, who is probably partly responsible for my becoming a Catholic, because of the insistence that he had that we should learn about the Catholic Church, because it was our heritage too. Interesting. Very interesting. How many Protestants are that open-minded? And then, in quiet meditation before the Blessed Sacrament, in the hours of night, in mental vision passed before my eyes, as it were in a flash, the corners at which decisions had an impact for better or for worse, but irreversibly. Moments that contain in them all the moments ahead. And if one goes this way, one can never go another way. And so forth. Some of them, in hindsight, perhaps not wise. But God writes straight with crooked lines, and as the Abbot of La Trappe explained one day, actually in chapter, the will of God acts like this. It finds us where we're at. There is a will of God even in the consequences of our blunders. We're not abandoned. He finds us there and says, okay, where do we go from here? And then Realising how there had been loss of time, loss of grace, particularly in postponing the priesthood because of mistakes in decision-making earlier on. It's a pity. And then I thought about all these people who come to me, often young, often in discernment, as we call it, trying to find the will of God not knowing where to go, partly because there aren't many safe places to go. But God is working in their soul, and a word from a priest at that point can for them also be the source of eventual ordination 
or loss of vocation. It's hugely important that souls be followed, protected and guided. They need help from someone who has perhaps been around a bit longer and knows the pitfalls. And remember that Satan tempts good people with good things, because the others are too evident. He will make sure they never settle down by always holding a virtual carrot before their eyes, greater perfection, so they actually miss the perfection that is at their doorstep. Keep seeking, keep seeking, and they never get there. And I was also led to this passage, which had hit me way back. Already in the sixth form in school, this author, Julian of Norwich, a recluse in the medieval period in England, had had a huge impact. Because you can see from the quaint way that she's writing, maybe the first woman ever to write in something resembling English, that the Lord was author of what she was saying. Now, in the context of our Lord's standing again on Mount Tabor with power and authority, look at this. He's holding this in his hand. All authority in heaven and on earth has been entrusted to me. In this, he showed me a little thing the quantity of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand, and to my understanding it was round as any ball. I looked thereupon and thought, What may this be? And I was answered in a general way, thus, It is all that is made. So imagine the vision of the Blessed Trinity. All the cosmos, all the plethora of stars, the uttermost parts of the universe, over which there apparently is no lid, it's all as round as a ball in his powerful hand. He is Lord. And he chooses to transmit his lordship to his creatures through those who exercise it in his name. The Pope, the bishops, and also those who rule the countries with authority given to them from on high. As the Lord points out to Pilate, you would have no authority over me lest they have been given to you from on high. And he goes on, Therefore the one who has committed me to you has the greater guilt. Transpose to what is happening this very week in this very land. There are people who hold a part of this ball in their hand and are exercising power and authority in the name of the supreme government. Some years ago, an atheist died. His name was Howard Storm. He was given a second chance to come back to life. And in the time that he was dead, he saw many things. One of them, unexpectedly, was this. He talked about it after he came back, when questioned what he had learned. They had asked him, were you given knowledge about future events, about a third world war, or anything of that kind? No, I wasn't given knowledge of a third world war. But I was given this bit of knowledge. Take it for what it's worth, it's very interesting. America, which had had 
the protection of God upon it as a land destined to be a Christian land, has now lost that protection because it had dethroned that authority. Ireland still has in its constitution the opening phrase in the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity. Therefore, the exercise of authority given to those governing us is that of the Blessed Trinity. Right now, there is an extremely well orchestrated and engineered ploy to obtain what is desired by the powers of the underworld in regard to the choice, which is no choice at all. Have you noticed how, bit by bit, over the land, very few of the posters not wanting this new law have been disappearing? Do you think they've just fallen off? I don't have television or radio, but I listen to those who listen to it, and they tell me that they're being pumped this all the time, that they're being told what they are to think. The referendum is actually not a referendum at all. It's a means of obtaining a rubber stamp on what hell wants. If you dethrone the authority of God over the central nucleus of all civilization, okay, you can do it. But you can do it without its author. And the consequences are those that happen inevitably once the author of the machine, the one who knows how to run it, is removed from it. Do you think that it will not affect even basic things like health? Diseases transmitted sexually will increase when certain things are increased and they cause a huge burden on the health system. Do you know the cost involved for every treatment of AIDS? It's colossal. And while they're getting all this privileged treatment, people, it could be your father, are not getting what they need to actually save their life in time. In Italy, right now, we have less, I believe, than one child per couple let alone marriage, but couple. Which means that every child being born in Italy right now has down the line the weight of four grandparents. And the pyramid is such that you go around Italy and you're meeting all the time people of 60 plus. It's something that hit me when I came back to Ireland again in 2007. Where have all these young people come from? Young people are the riches of this land. How could there be too many? Fiddle around with the source of life and you fiddle around with the whole tissue of society. How can a father without a mother really have a notion of how to bring up a child? Do you think that will lead to human beings of perfect round psychology and temperament? Or do you think we'll have down the line monsters of future society unable to control any of their emotions, let alone that of other people? Do you think that even on the human level, to flirt with emotions and all the contraption of our being outside the context of holy matrimony is indifferent? It is part of a global vision of the author of life, and only he knows how to run it. We can't take out of context something as though it were a toy. We are, in procreating, co-workers with the Blessed Trinity. We are, in doing our own thing, fiddlers around with a toy that we found as though it were our own to play with. 
Let's get this straight. Ireland too, in a week's time, could find itself in that situation of losing all the divine protection that hitherto, for 2,000 years, had made this land different from any other. What does Ireland want? God or his enemy? The choice is theirs. And I'm afraid, my friends, that very few this week have a notion of what's actually going on. Regret. There is a pain of heart. The heart knows not how well to hold, withhold, lest it be known. There is a secret that no pen will jot, for rarely was a night by markings shown. There is a yearning for what never can be given again. For this one thing bears all away in its one coming. For to man a moment is the place whence ours echo. There is within the history of time another that is writ in ink so fine that aeons pass it by and onward chime. As if no eye could read or see the shine of little things that mattered once a lot. For matter of small weight was soon forgot.